Once upon a time, there was a young girl named Eve who went with her parents to a museum. Together, they marveled at an exhibit celebrating the well-esteemed but obscure artist Weiss Gertaner. When suddenly, Eve found herself lost in a surrealistic world which used Gertaner's artworks as a focal point and brought them all to life. Most of them, however, were far from friendly. As she pieced her way through puzzles and dodged to dangerous foes, Eve found two other souls who had also been pulled into this bizarre world. One was a strange hobo named Gary. The other was a young girl her age named Mary. For a while, both companions doted on little Eve. But things were not as they seemed. Gary discovered that Mary carried a horrible secret. She was actually another of Guertena's paintings, passing herself off as a regular human who was trying to reach the real world. But in order for Mary to cross over from Guertena's fabricated world to reality, someone had to take her place. That someone, that Mary decided, was Gary. But her plan soon unraveled and she went mad. Eve's only recourse was to burn Mary's painting and destroy her. But even though Eve and Gary had a brief opportunity to return to the real world, they instead chose to delve even deeper into Guaratena's world and learn of the artist's secret works unseen by the public eye. But now, having conquered even that aspect of Guaratena's gallery, the opportunity to leave this uncanny world of art presents itself to Eve and Gary yet again. And so, stepping into the blackness of this area, Eve had reached the final stage, which, coincidentally, was called Final Stage. For the last time, Eve dipped her rose in the vase. But how would she get past those pesky guardrails? Ah, there we go. Ironically, the final stage was a bed. A very nostalgic bed that smelled of home. Based on the shape of the bed, it looked like it had only room for one. It looked rather comfortable. Eve wanted to try it out. It had been a long, trying day. Wait, Eve, this piece gives me a bad feeling. I think we should stay away. But Eve had other plans. If Gary was going to take a nap, so was she. Eve? That voice, it sounded so familiar. Yes, it was. Happy birthday, Eve. <laughs> I'll treat you today. Here's a cake with your favorite strawberries. Special just for today. Congrats, Eve. Nine already. You've grown. You used to be such a small girl. Ah, this was the moment when little Eve turned nine years old. Sweet memories. There's still a lot more to go, huh, Eve? Yeah, I look forward to it. Hmm? Hey, you. <laughs> you found it! Well, this is a little early. But hey, a birthday present from your father. Go on, open it. Eve opened up the present. Ah, a nice stuffed bunny. Eve could never have enough of those. Well, Eve, there aren't many bunnies that big out there. Now, honey, didn't I tell you that she was too old for stuffed animals? Huh? Did you? I did. Eve's room is already full of bunnies as it is. It hardly needs any more. Well, but look, Eve loves it. <sighs> Fine. Anyway, Eve, here's my own present. Eve was hardly paying attention, but somehow she managed to open up her mother's gift. A handkerchief with your name on it. I had to make it at the store. A lace handkerchief? Isn't that a little soon for Eve? She's fine. She's very careful with things. We don't need to buy her new ones very often. So of course I want her to have good things early on. I suppose. Eve was having such a <sighs> relaxing time. She could 
Take a nice nap right here. Oh, Eve, are you sleepy? You were really having fun. You must be tired, right? <laughs> Maybe so. How about you rest, Eve? We can keep partying when you wake up, okay? Yes, that would be nice. Sleep well, Eve. Good night. Damn it, Eve, wake up! Jeez, Eve, I told you not to sleep in strange magical beds like that. Who knows what could have happened if I hadn't pulled you out in time? Eve could sum up the experience in three words. Totally worth it. Eve, that rose. That's the embodiment of spirit. I think we're back, Eve. Well, sorta. We're close at least. No, Eve. I know you want to rest, but that bed is nothing but bad news. The real museum's up ahead. And sure enough, Gary was right. There was the coughing man. And there was Abyss of the Deep, where Eve first stepped in and made her trip to this wonderland. Indeed, all the paintings that Eve had first looked at were right here, right in their proper place. There's the entrance. But if we go that way, won't it just take us back to Mary's sketchbook? If this area is what I think it is, then one of these paintings is going to be our ticket home. I want to eat your soul! Please? Definitely not that one. What a bitch. Abe stared apprehensively at the lady in red. But thankfully, she did not move from her spot this time. Eve had seen everything else in this museum. There was only one place left. Only one stone left unturned. And it was right here. This large painting. But it looked very different. What's this big mural? Fabricated world? Hey, isn't that... the former gallery? Eve would have recognized those white walls from anywhere. That must be it. Does that mean... if we jump into this, we'll go back there? But how are we meant to jump into a painting? A running start wouldn't be a bad idea. W what? <coughs> Eve, look! The frame! Now might be our chance! Yes! I'm really in! Hurry up, Eeb! Eeb? Eeb? What's wrong? Come on! But the woman Eeb saw... How could you be in here? Eeb! I finally found you! Sheesh! I was looking everywhere. Don't just go running off places on your own! Your father's waiting for you too, see? Let's go, Eve. Eve, hey, what are you doing? Hurry up and come over. Eve, how many times have I told you? Don't go following strangers. Hey, it's not scary, okay? You'll be fine. Eve, listen to your mother. Don't go with some stranger. Do you want to never see your mother and father again? Eve, I'll pull you over. Grab come my with head. me, Eve. Had her mother and father really found their way into this place? But how? How could they be here? Eve had to think quickly, and the simplest answer she could come up with was that they didn't. If Guertana could paint little girls well enough to pose as human beings, then certainly her mom and dad... All right! She took a second look at Fabricated World and Eve was already bored. This was the largest painting in the gallery. 
but she already felt this place had given everything it had to offer her. She looked once again at Guertena's artwork, but these were things she had seen before. Indeed, the people were enraptured by all the paintings and sculptures, and while they were well drawn and crafted masterfully, it all seemed to be lacking in something, as if the wind had been sucked out of them somehow. There was her mom and dad, admiring that same painting. Abe, did you look at that fish over there? To think there's a fish like that in the depths of the sea. Scary, huh? It's got an eerie look for sure, but doesn't it just make you a little excited too? What's wrong? Are you feeling tired? Actually, she was tired and a little hungry, but she didn't want her parents to cut their fun short for her sake. just when she thought she could find nothing interesting in this drab museum. There he was, the hobo she had come across before, with an air of strength and more life than any painting could show. She just had to talk to him, at least once. Hmm? What is it, little lady? What are you looking at? Hmm, well, let's see. It's a rose sculpture, I guess. When I look at this sculpture, I feel somehow sorrowful. I wonder why. Are you okay, mister? Uh, I'm sorry if I said anything to trouble you, Eeb. That's okay. Wait, what? Who's Eeb? I'm Eeb. What? That's your name? Your name's really Eeb? Yep, that's my name. That's the strangest thing. I mean, I don't know you at all. It just kind of... came out. How odd. But, actually, have we, perhaps, met somewhere before? I saw you once when I was going through the other paintings here. My, look at me, asking you such strange things. Never mind what I said. Well, bye. Goodbye, Gary. Hmm? What's this? A handkerchief? When did I get this? Hey, that's mine! Oh, this is yours? My word, it's true. Ebe, your name's right on it. But why is it in my pocket? Plus, there's blood on it. Ugh. Why did you put blood in my handkerchief? I was... I was... wounded. On the hand. And... a girl. What girl? A girl gave me her handkerchief. But that's my handkerchief! Yes, this handkerchief was given to me as a gift. A gift! From Eeb. I gave you that? Eeb, I remember now. We were together back there. How could I have forgotten? It was so important. We stuck together through that bizarre gallery, chased by those strange statues, and Mary too, right? Uh... Hmm... Eeb, do you remember? I don't. Ah, remember when you got back my rose for me, Eeb? And the floor covered in eyes, and the room full of mannequins, and also, when you fainted, Eeb, I gave you some candy. Candy? It's hard to believe even now, but it must have happened, right? Yeah, I remember now. We went through a lot together. Eve, we got back safely. We did it! <laughs> <laughs> There's so much more that I want to talk about, but I've got to get going. Uh, uh, Eve, is it alright if I keep this handkerchief a while longer? Why would you want to do that? It wouldn't do to return it as it is. I'll have to... 
clean it up before I give it back. Because we will see each other again. Promise, Gilly? I promise. Let's get this show on the road!